Welcome to the Zono Sports Show, where you know Zonos. The NBA playoffs have been in full swing, and yeah, you guys missed me last week. I was on vacation in San Diego, so we didn't really get necessarily get to talk. Sorry for those of you who were expecting something. Sorry for the wait for episode 235. However, definitely got to shoot the juice at you, okay? Episode 234 is what I meant, right? Now, the Lebronto Raptors were, oh, excuse me, did I mean the Toronto Raptors? Now, I say the Lebronto Raptors because LeBron James clearly owns the soul of the Toronto Raptors. They were the first one seed to ever be swept before the conference finals. Now, how do I sum up the season for the Toronto Raptors? A letdown, maybe? I mean, considering the fact that they competed all year at a high level, they were the number one seed, they won almost 60 games, but they could not get it done in the playoffs against the almighty LeBron James. Now, they've been beaten three straight years by the Cavs in the playoffs. Now, in my opinion, throughout the rest of history, they will be looked at as the Utah Jazz of the Eastern Conference. Now, what do I mean by the Utah Jazz of the Eastern Conference? You remember those teams with Carl Malone, Ostertag, John Stockton, Byron Russell. Do you remember those teams in Utah back in the day that for some reason just could not get over the hump against Michael Jordan? Carl Malone and those squads were a decent bunch of players. However, they just could not seem to defeat the almighty Michael Jordan. And in the same instance, in the same breath, in history, we'll remember the Toronto Raptors for being really good in the East for some years with DeMar Rosen and Kyle Lowry, but they could never fully conquer LeBron James. Now, in my personal opinion, break this team up. Drake or somebody, make a phone call and say, hey, we'll trade you DeMar for this person or that person. This team needs to be restructured from my vantage point. You've got guys on this team who have been together for a few years. Serge Ibaka is not a primetime starter or primetime player that I thought he would be in Toronto. He came up small in this series. And then I also look at, I look at Kyle Lowry. Seems to lose his heart in the playoffs. Seems to never show up. Like the lights, when they, get the, when they become the brightest, they just become too much for Kyle Lowry. Um, LeBron, he's 5-0 versus one seeds in the Eastern Conference. And who said this man lost the sauce? Yeah, I know he's getting a little bit older, but who said he lost the sauce? He's shown us that we need to witness, that's been his moniker throughout his NBA career, the greatness of what he is becoming in his prime. Two buzzer beaters in this series mean something. Yes, I know people are going to say, well, all the buzzer beaters he's hit this postseason, the game's been tied. I totally get that. However, he's starting to do it. We talked about LeBron James for deferring for years to Dwayne Wade and Kyrie Irving. But this year, LeBron James has said, you know what? I've got nothing to lose. Everybody always talks about how I'm 3-5 and five in the NBA Finals. Everybody always talks about how I can't get it done on the biggest stage when the lights are the brightest, when it's crunch time, when the game's on the line. I'm going to do it this year. And you know what? Even though all these games that he's hit these buzzer readers in have been tied, they have been epic. They have been momentous. They have been incredible. They have been legendary. That's the best word that I can use to sum up all this. I don't want to. I don't want to harp on that word. But LeBron James, LeBron James, if they make it to the finals this year, who knows what could happen with the way this man's playing? He looks like a reincarnation in the postseason of Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant in their prime. He single-handedly has stolen the Raptors' heart, and I don't think they can ever get it back. Not next year on Valentine's Day. Not ever. It's done. So. LeBron and Cleveland moving on. Who will they play the next round? Who will they face? Who will they go up against? A Joel Embiid caliber of player or a Jalen Brown, Tatum, Terry Rozier? The Boston Celtics and Philadelphia 76ers will reach the king and have to deal with what he's been doing this postseason. Now, the Philadelphia 76ers are down 3-1 in this series. Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons stay alive yesterday by getting the game four win, decisive victory at home. Um, TJ McConnell was the X Factor. He was the Rocky Balboa of this fight in Philadelphia. 19-7-5 and five is what the point guard did. TJ McConnell never gets a lot of credit for what he's done in the NBA, but if you ask me, he's a great complimentary player on any particular roster. He was good at Arizona. I think he's been good for the Philadelphia 76ers. Ben Simmons had to bounce back from that one-point performance in Game 3 where they had all the, the uh, Wilt Chamberlain memes holding up the one point. <laughs> ben Simmons, I think he's got to be more of an attacker, get to the rim, which is what he did in Game 4 which was exceptional. That's why they got the victory. Can they go to Boston and win a game five? If they do, this could become a much more interesting series. Joel Embiid, 
He needs to chill on the extracurriculars. It's too much for me, Joel Embiid. Just ball. You just started playing a full season this this year, and I understand you're smelling yourself. You were an all-star this year. I get the fact that uh, you are starting to realize that you are an elite talent in the NBA. I totally get that. But you've seen how the media tends to chastise Draymond Green for the antics that he's up to. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. Because you're talking about endorsements and things like that. When you talk about those type of things, they want a guy who they can sell. So don't jeopardize that because you want to get in little skirmishes with Terry Rozier where he said Terry Rozier is too short to punch him, tried to punch him twice, didn't work out for him. And then also the skirmish that he got into with Marque- Marcus Morris or Markeith, either or the twin that plays for the Celtics, that one, yeah, that one. <laughs> uh, where, and, and Morris did a great job of just reminding Joel, Joel Embiid without even talking. I'm not going to waste my breath. 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0, 3-0. Great. Great comeback, great comeback. You can't talk too much trash when you're down 3-0. But who I, th- who I think will win this series will probably be the Boston Celtics. They'll know that Philadelphia's going to come out desperate in Game 5. And I don't think that Brad Stevens will allow his team to make another trip back to Philadelphia. He's too good of a coach. He is probably the best coach in the NBA. A lot of people don't like the fact that I'm saying that or other people say it. Paul Pierce has said it. Some people might say that's a little biased because he is a Celtic. But... Brad Stevens has shown that he can get a group of guys to play. And that's what these guys have been doing. And I commend him. I commend him. Great coach. The Rockets and Warriors are on a collision course in the Western Conference. The Wild West. Both of these teams are up 3-1. Series are essentially over. However, closeouts tonight, they may not be as easy as some people think. CP3 said after the game the other day that, hey, I've been here before. And we know Chris Paul's been there before. We Oh, what happened when he, I think he broke his hand that year. They were up 3-1. Then the Rockets eventually came back and beat them 4-3 in that series when he and Blake Griffin and DeAndre and all the guys were together in, in L.A. So he is all too familiar with this type of lead in the series. So I'm sure he'll be focused tonight. KD's late night text from Draymond Green solicited 38 points on 15-27 to for sh- shooting. Kevin Durant has got to be that player every single night if they want to continue to try and win another championship, if they want to repeat. Because Chef Curry, Draymond, Clay, Andre Iggy, all those guys, they're great players, but we saw what happened to that 73-9 and nine team. We saw what happened. They didn't win a championship. He was the complimentary piece they brought in to get them over that hump because, obviously, that one championship may have been all they got the year before. So... I honestly think Kevin Durant's got to continue to drop a consistent 30 points a night. With Steph Curry even coming back healthy, he's got to still be the premier player on the roster, which he's been. He's been the the exemplary talent that's been able to come in and keep the Golden State fans cheering and continue to keep the Warriors at at the superior level that they're at above the competition. Anthony Davis, he's great. Rondo's great, but they ain't no Golden State Warriors. Vice versa, Donovan Mitchell's great, but they ain't the Houston Rockets, the the Utah Jazz. Now, Rockets and Warriors, who would win this series between these two teams if they meet in the conference finals? I think the Warriors are still the creme de la creme in the West. James Harden personally has to show me that he can get it done in the postseason, in big-time games, after that matchup that he had with the Spurs last year. The man man disappeared. They had memes with his beard over his face. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? He was nowhere to be found. And his team lost by double digits. So, James Harden, you got to show up. I think that Golden State will win this series because James Harden, I think he will play small. He'll go up against his ex-teammate, Kevin Durant. And I think that he won't be able to deal with the pressure that Golden State will put on these guys in the playoffs. Chris Paul either. Never been to a conference finals. And I think this will be his first and only conference finals. NHL watch Alexander Ovechkin and the Washington Capitals beat the Pittsburgh Penguins, the defending champions with Sidney Crosby and Yevgeny Malkin, all these players, Jake Gunsel, the young boy. They finally end a 20-year Eastern Finals drought. Alexander Ovechkin needed this victory, and you could see the weight shifted off his shoulders after they made after they made a goal late in overtime and won 2-1. You could see him exhale because it's like the ghost of Sidney Crosby has been haunting the locker of Alexander Ovechkin for so many years. So congrats to the Caps. They'll play the Vegas Golden Knights, a hot team, hot ass team in the Western Conference. They have been all year. They're a new expansion team. They're hot boys. They don't lose at home. Alexander Ovechkin, what are you going to do now? 
let me see what you do now against these new expansion boys out there in the desert. East, East, the Eastern Conference, Tampa Bay, they await the Nashville Predators and P.K. Subban or the Winnipeg Jets. So we shall see what happens with that in hockey. Now, NCAA-wise, Mother's Day is Sunday, and you got to love the mamas. Mama, you know I love you. you got to love the mamas. Now, the reason why I love and am showing love to Wendell Carter's mom, Kalia Carter, is because of what she said about the NCAA. I think it, it's, it, it's a more resounding when you have a parent that comes out and rips the NCAA, comparing it to modern day slavery, than you would any, it, it's, it's more impactful than it would be for me to say it or any other sports writer or anything like that, to have somebody whose kid went through the process basically eloquently and, and poignantly state why they feel as though the NCAA is like modern day slavery is phenomenal. Because essentially it is, it's indentured servitude. You've got kids that come to a school, make money for the institution, can't reap any of the benefits, but will give you food and shelter in return. You give us athleticism and help us build these nice campus facilities and this and that, this and that, but you can't have any of the cheese. And we're also going to make t-shirts with your number on it, but not your name because you can't profit, right? And you're not a professional. But we're going to sell number twos and threes and this and that. Whatever you're... We're going to sell number eights. We're not going to put Lamar Jackson on the back. So, shout out to her for just basically coming out and saying and asking questions like, who made this institution like this? She was very emotional and very descriptive in the way that she felt about this entire system and said the NCAA needs to be broken up. Now, I'm not going to say the NCAA needs to be broken up. I'm not going to say that. I personally like seen the word NCAA, I don't know why, maybe it's because it's it's been ingrained in my brain for so long that I like seeing that blue logo. I, I, I like the fact that they put together this tournament, but if you guys aren't going to break up, then why not help these kids financially, well, reap the financial benefits from what you guys are doing? It's very, very simple. No, they're not professional athletes, but look at what they're doing for these schools and these campuses. You got to find a way to make the system better. And I applaud Kalia Carter for coming out and stating that, hey, my, my son Wendell Carter, he was at Duke. He, he did all this stuff, but he ain't got nothing. And he could go outside and get hit by a car tomorrow, and we won't, it won't mean anything because he never played in the NBA or this or that, and he never reaped any money from Duke. So what will it mean? So I applaud her. Congrats to her for speaking out. Now, the Salty Awards of the Week they go to Big Ben Roethlisberger and Joe Flacco. Big Ben, I got to talk to you first. Came out after the NFL draft and said, I didn't know we were drafting a quarterback. Who said we were drafting a quarterback? Blah, 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 blah. Well, Big Ben, you're old. You came out last season and said that you probably don't have it anymore. Maybe, maybe you need to retire. And then you go to your team after the season and say, you know, I think I still got it. I can play three to five more years. And... You get salty that the, the, at the fact that they draft a quarterback when you were uncertain about if you could even finish the season last year. As Drake says, one of my favorite bars ever, business is business is strictly financial. And you should understand that more so than anybody, Big Ben Roethlisberger. Joe Flacco, on the other hand, call Lamar, Joe. Just give Lamar. I heard Joe Flacco has not even reached out and spoken to Lamar Jackson. Yes, I know Lamar Jackson's electrifying. Yes, I know that he's an exceptional quarterback. I know he's the hottest thing since sliced bread or Michael Vick. And I also know that he will be your eventual successor. But be classy about it, Joe. Be classy. Get the man a call and just say, hey, Lamar, welcome to the league. If you need anything, my brother, I am here. But Joe Flacco doesn't want to do that because he sees the writing on the wall. You've been playing safe for years, Joe Flacco. You've been playing it safe for years. You became, you went from... A hard-armed, strong-armed strong, strong -armed quarterback to a crossing guard who just makes sure nobody gets hit out here. And I can't blame the Baltimore Ravens for taking a chance on Lamar Jackson. I think it's the best pickup they made. And honestly, I like them having Lamar as their starter and RG3 as the backup. Joe Flacco, I think you've been done for quite some time. You play too safe. You're the street cone out there. You're not a guy who takes chances anymore. You're a guy who's content off that one Super Bowl in 2013 that Ray Lewis and Ray Rice helped with. Hmm. Now, next show, we will definitely wrap. I'm glad I can meet back up with you guys and spit some sports talk, sports talk to you. So thank you so much for watching the Zono Sports Show. I'm glad to be back, episode 234. And you know that Zono's.